This is Lady Sister Wolf, Elder and Guardian of Inner Circle Sanctuary, interviewing Lady Joanna, the High Priestess of Inner Circle Sanctuary. Hello, my lady. Hello, my lady. Um, so we have some questions here from elders and other people. Actually, it's all elders. Uh, we're going to ask you some questions about your time between uh, Temple of the Inner Circle, Totic, and Inner Circle Sanctuary, ICS. Uh, we'll start with the basics, like what's your origin story? How did you find Wicca and how did you find Totic? Well, I um, read a lot of science fiction back when I was younger and I came across Andra Norton's books and uh, I loved her witchy books and I wanted to find out if there was anything to it. So I started looking around for books on witchcraft and where I could find um, witchcraft being taught and it took me two years to find the cat and cauldron. Um, I did go into at that time the bell book and candle but at that time it was not uh, welcoming to me. Uh, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up when I went in there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it wasn't too long after that that I was down on Eastern DI and I saw the cat and cauldron. I went in and I talked to this beautiful little lady called Lady Morgana and she signed me up to take classes, and I've been there ever since. And what year was that? That was in 1994. So you're three years shy of 30 years with Inner Circle in some form or another. Um, been a while. <laughs> so what made you stick around for as long as you have? First off, it was Lady Morgana, and I truly wanted to learn about witchcraft, Wicca, the religion. And in 94, there were a lot of books, but I was unable to find too many of them. I didn't shop too much at uh, Barnes and Nobles at that time. I haunted the libraries, and occasionally you could find a book, but you checked it out and when you checked it back in and then came back later to get it again it never came back <laughs> I was told later by the librarians that uh, sometimes their witchy books were checked out by Christians and destroyed and they would rather pay for the book uh, in fees rather than to let it go back into the library system. Hmm. So, I had that same problem when I was looking for books. Um, as the longest running member of ICS, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen? For one thing, we don't have as much drama, which I think is really a good thing. Uh, back when we were Totic, um, Temple of the Inner Circle, it was open to anyone in the public that wanted to come in and sign up for classes, which was good for me because that's how I found the place. But there were also a lot of people that were looking for something and couldn't find it, and they were unhappy. I think their drama was from just misunderstanding or not being in the right place for them. And today we interview most of our uh, new students and they either come right in or they never show up for our classes because we talk to them and tell them what to expect. And if that's not what they're looking for, it's a good way of learning this is not the path for me. 
So I like it better now because uh, of the way we do things, how we get our students. That's cool. Um, you had a very unique experience where when you started, your husband was a little resistant to you being a part of the group. Um, how was it having to juggle your husband and your kids and you still attended church with them often? No, I did not no? attend church. Um, but we had um, things that we did every Sunday okay. and as a family. So I made sure that I was there for that. Uh, yes, he was quite resistant. <laughs> for the first I'd say close to three months <laughs> that was it he asked me every time I came to class was I going to the devil worship class <laughs> and after a while I quit protesting that it wasn't devil worship I just said yep I'm going <laughs> see you later and uh, I think um, after a while he said it wouldn't have mattered had it been uh, Wicca or any other religion. He just didn't want me spending all my time away. Mm -hmm. And he came to accept that I was determined to learn this. And what do they think about it now? He accepts it. He likes the people in the group. He uh, makes special dishes for him once in a while. And <laughs> we are all aware of his cheese smoking abilities. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he loves to hear the compliments. <laughs> and what about your daughters? Yeah, they were little when you started, weren't they? They were teenagers. Um, they thought it was kind of cool. A little weird and uh, <laughs> they uh, thought it was a great talking point with their friends my mom's a witch <laughs> <laughs> so they accepted it fairly easily so with inner circle we all start as students but at some point we transition and become guardians or teachers how was that transition for you going from being the one learning to the one teaching? Actually, it was not much of a change because I think teaching is learning. You learn more from teaching, or at least as much from teaching as you do as being a student. And uh, you learn all the problems that a teacher has to have with a room full of students that all have different needs uh, different abilities, um, so it's definitely a change, but not one you should be afraid of. What would you say was your proudest accomplishment so far with both issue, both uh, iterations of Inner Circle? That is a difficult question because there were milestones all along. When I was initiated first degree, I thought that was the epitome of my trip along the path. And I actually had thought about um, dropping out not too long before I initiated and we were having a Sabbath in the wash at that time and I found a triangular stone which was the sigil for our first degree and I thought maybe I'll stick around and I did and then I was invited to um, attend the second degree classes and I thought wow okay I enjoyed the people I enjoyed the lessons I loved the Sabbaths so yes I stuck stuck around and then 
second degree initiation. Oh, that was great. Um, I did not think I would ever uh, be initiated third degree. I really did not. Nor did I think that I would ever be a HMFPTS. <laughs> uh, but when Lady Morgana began to fail and uh, Lord Mordred uh, said that I could uh, be initiated, I thought, great. So um, we wrote up the ritual, a special ritual for Lord Tannis and myself, and we initiated each other, other to third degree. Nice. So you're the high priestess now, the HMFPS, which for those of you who don't abla, stands for High Mother Effin Priestess. <laughs> How do you like being the High Priestess of a coven? I think this is a great job, but only because I have elders like Lady Athiona, you, Lady Sister Wolf, Lady Anwen, Lady Neshoba, our newest uh, elder, Lady Rosemary, and of course Lord Tannis. This group runs itself and this job is made easy by all of you. So I never thought I would be here, but I am and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you, my lady. What, what makes you proud of ICS? The same things I just said. The people that are in it, the elders who are the guardians, our teachers now, all of you help make this, I think, greater than it was. So, kudos to all of you. <laughs> um. So f where do you see us going in the future, us being ICS, the, as we are now? How do you, what do you see in the future for us? That's difficult. I think it's going to keep growing because it, it seems to be getting larger and larger. More people seem to be interested in Wicca. It's uh, like it's second wind, I know, in the... 1900s that it was quite uh, a new thing and everyone was trying to get in on it and then it kind of slowed down but now I think um, it's more people are trying to learn about it and I think it's going to keep growing. So now we're going to get into some controversial questions. What if anything, do you miss about Temple of the Inner Circle and how we used to do things? I miss Lady Morgana mm. more than anything. Um, how we did things back then, I, I enjoyed myself. Um, but I enjoy these things also. I like the way we're teaching now. This way, uh, a student uh, progresses at their own pace. They are not held back by the rest of the class, which in Totic, we were held back. If the class failed, then you failed individually also. But now it's the individual who progresses and you go at your own pace, so you are not you might not um, be on the same level as someone you started with. They might be ahead of you or you might be ahead of them. And I think that is one of the better things that we have done. Speaking of Lady Morgana and Lord Mordred, tell us a little bit about them, what your favorite memory is of them. What, uh, what were your first impressions of them? 
Lady Morgana was this awesome woman who has had charisma dripping off of her. Lord Mordred was this tall, dark, silent type, scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I um, always was very cautious around him um, for years, but Lady Morgana was one of the, my favorite people of all time. So, what's your favorite memory with them? Oh, <laughs> I have to tell you, it was when Lady Morgana was telling about her and Lord Mordred coming together for the first time <laughs> as a working partnership as directed by their high priestess. The tale that she told was so funny and quite vulgar, <laughs> <laughs> but it was hilarious and it's one of my favorite stories that she told. Uh, what about the Lord Mordred? Do you have a favorite memory of him? Or, better question, we all have a story about the moment when we stopped being intimidated by Lord Mordred, when he went from being tall, dark, and mysterious to just Lord Mordred, our buddy. Uh, we all, I think, have a story like that, those of us who got to spend time with him. I think um, that point came when I was initiated second degree and we started taking classes in their home and doing our esbits there. Mm -hmm. And I became uh, very familiar with him and Lady Morgana and that uh, made the difference. Um, I think when he told me that you and Lord Tennyson initiate to third degree was one of the proudest moments and one of my happiest moments with him. So, nice. And of course, we still have to learn the witch witch's rune. That's right, my lady. <laughs> Uh, speaking of former elders and people who were huge influencers on Totic and eventually ICS, uh, there's an elder who I never, well, I don't know if she was an elder. Was she an elder? Mm -hmm. There's an elder that I never got to meet because I believe she passed shortly before I joined. It was uh, Lady Iris, and I hear lots of stories about her, but I, I don't think I've ever heard you tell a story about Lady Iris. Lady Iris was... Um very thin little lady that worked all of her life and she loved Temple of the Inner Circle. She took classes with us and her name was Dorothy Blanchett and I thought the world of her. She was a very sweet person. Um, her family was all very um, died in the wool Christians. Mm. They hated her being part of the Wiccan group, so we were part of her family for a long time. And she went through first degree, came into second degree with us, and she became ill um, and passed away. But she was a lovely person. She bequeathed to me most of her books and things of that sort because she knew that her family would destroy all of that. Would you say making provisions in your uh, later in life and uh, after life, if you will, your will and living testament, would you say there's precedent there that you need to make plans for your magical tools and your books? It would be a good idea if your family is terribly against it. Yes, you should make arrangements. Or if you don't mind them being destroyed, you know your family's going to take care of it for you. Mm. 
but if you want to leave your writings and tools and things like that to your coven, then you should make sure that your family knows about it, and either in a will or uh, my family all know that all my things would go to uh, Inner Circle Sanctuary if something happened to me. Okay. Back to influencers who I never got to meet, uh, but whose stories I've heard in perpetuity. Uh, Lord Loki, part of the Loki and Pandora crew. I got to know Lady Pandora quite well during my time, but Lord Loki I never got to meet. Lord Loki was this in-your-face New Yorker, was a cab driver, and a Wiccan, and he didn't mind telling it like it was. He <laughs> I will always remember when he walked in and did a lecture, and the first thing out of his mouth was, Mary was a whore. <laughs> and I, what? <laughs> He was always saying something that would just shock you and make you think. And then he would go into whys and wherefores. But yes, he was definitely someone that was uh, influential. <laughs> Lord Loki and Lady Pandora were initiated into a particular sect of Wicca. Do you, uh... I do not remember. They were Gardnerians, and they did practice skyclad. Not with our group, but <laughs> I can remember some celebration parties at their home. Um, clothing was optional. Um, quite shocking in some ways. <laughs> Lady Pandora was uh, a very influential person on my coming up. I got to spend a lot of time with her at the store at Public and Candle. Um, she worked there for years and years and was there at the beginning of almost every single class that I was in. What, how did you, how did she influence you in your coming up? She was actually um, very quietly determined, I thought. She was funny and uh, she was, she would explain anything to you. If you ask her a question, she would explain it to you. And I thought that was wonderful. She was a great teacher. She was, very much. Do, um, at some point, Cat and Cauldron and Bell Book and Candle were both owned by Lady Morgana and both operating at the same time. Did you have a preference between them, Cat and Cauldron or Bell Book and Candle? Well, as I said before, uh, my first um, uh, knowledge of Bell Book and Candle was one of uh, creepiness. I didn't care for it that much. But I loved the Cat and Cauldron from the first time I walked in there. It was so open and welcoming. When Lady Morgana took over the Bell Book and Candle and she did cleansing and uh, uh, reconsecrated the place, then yes, it was very nice. Um, and it had its own power and charm. But we always, that first instance when you fall in love with something, I think is a memory that you cherish. And so I always cherish the memory, memory of the Cat and Cauldron. What's your favorite drink? Okay. <clears throat> it depends on the night. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like wine. I like margaritas. I even like um, lemon drops, <laughs> but um, I try to stick to wine most of the time unless it's a margarita here at home. Hmm. 
Speaking of wine, you used to be quite the vintner in your day. <laughs> I remember many a Sabbath story fueled solely on Lady Joanna's wines. Uh, Are you still making wine? Do you plan on making more in the future? What's your favorite wine to make? Oh, actually mead is, to me, is probably one of the best wines, but I made some dandelion wine a couple of years ago that was really quite nice, and uh, some rose hips wine when I was in Alaska, I made some of that, and uh, it was pretty good too, so I might make a gallon here and there, but I'm not going to be making the five gallon containers that I used to make. Oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Along the lines of favorites, uh, do you have a favorite Sabbath? Um, it depends on the wheel of the year. <laughs> uh, if it's March, you know, I really like Ostera. <laughs> <laughs> of course, midsummer, Beltane is a great time. Running through the woods. <laughs> Which is another story. <laughs> I remember when Lady Morgana told about her high priestess coming to Belte, and she had on her running shoes because she was going to chase down her partner for the night. <laughs> I need to make some notes on changes that need to be made to the ritual. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you have a favorite ritual? You've performed nearly every ritual that Inner Circle has. Um, do you have a favorite one without giving away any secrets of rituals? Do you have a favorite ritual that you've performed? I think um, I love Samhain. Um, our greater rituals were great. <laughs> but other than uh, Yule is n my least favorite to perform although it's one of my favorites to attend. Uh, Lunasa to me was a, that one was a very, very good one. I love that one. Nice. You spoke a little bit about it um, earlier when we asked you about the future of ICS, but what do you think the future holds for Wicca specifically? I think it's going to continue to grow and continue to attract people. And although um, it hurts me to say it, I think that there are going to be just as many sects of Wicca and there will be just as many backbiters and trolls in Wicca as there are in conservative Christianity at the present time. Although I I hate the thought of that, but I, I think that's going to eventually happen when we grow to be larger and more and more people get into Wicca. That seems to be how people progress. There is a lot of division in the community, uh, the Wiccan community specifically right now. One of the things that seems to be dividing them boggles my mind but it's the Wiccan read there are some Wiccans that say they're Wiccan but they don't follow the read but the read is like the only law Wiccans have what are your thoughts on the Wiccan read and do you think all Wiccans should follow it or do you think it should be a personal thing <clears throat> well I think it first of all it is a very personal thing and if that is your belief, you should follow it because if you're not true to what you believe in, then I think that's going to work against you. Um, people who do not believe in the Wiccan Read, well, I don't know if you could call them Wiccan. Maybe witches or um, spell crafters. Uh, workers of witchcraft but the religion itself is trying to become uh, closer and more in tune with the creator 
or the creation energy of the universe. And the Wiccan read, and it harm none, that I think is going to take you back to the source. Whereas we believe in reincarnation. If you can't get it right now, you're going to have to repeat. Mm -hmm. So that's just like our classes. You've got to learn the lesson. So I think that uh, it is a good way to live for all people. Do you think that joining a group or a coven is beneficial to a person? If you want the camaraderie of a group, yes. If it takes a little bit of urging uh, by group members to help you learn and participate, yes. If you are uh, a loner, then go down to the Barnes and Nobles and buy you a few books and read them up and call yourself a witch. <laughs> Speaking of reading a book and calling yourself a witch, the other divisive thing that we're seeing in the community now, right now is this difference between traditional with a capital T Wicca and Neo Wicca. Do you think there is a difference between them? Should we be dividing ourselves? Um, you know, it's not really what we think. It's how people are. They're going to divide themselves whether we want them to or not. Um, the big T traditional is like... I think we're traditional because we um, continue to work as Our Lady before us had her tradition and her lady before her. If we are talking about a specific tradition such as um, Gerald Gardner's, Gardnerian or Alexandrian, no, we are not their tradition, although we are traditional in that we use their teachings. I think we call ourselves eclectic traditionalists, which is very apt. Um, dividing the community, there shouldn't be a division. I don't like the fact that people say, well, it's, you're neo-traditional. Aren't we all neo-traditional? None of us practice Wicca like it was thousands and thousands of years ago. Because Wicca didn't exist thousands and thousands of years ago. There was a paganism yes. type community at that time that practiced shamanistic traditions and things like that. And we are not like that. Although there are some of uh, that in what we do, it's not, we're new. We're new. So neo-paganism, neo-wiccan, we are that. And I embrace that. So we talked about some past elders, but you're not the only third degree initiate that we have in Inner Circle. We also have Lord Tannis and Lady Athiona, and you've known them probably far longer than you've known any of the rest of us. What are your feelings and thoughts about them? A couple of stories, maybe. First class, we had to stand up and tell who we were and what we expected to get out of the classes. And I told Lady Morgana, I just wanted to learn what witchcraft was about. And she said, well, we can teach that. And Lord Tannis got up and he said a few words and later she said, I don't know about him. <laughs> he sure doesn't talk very much. 
and <laughs> that has definitely changed. Yes, it has. So now he is our high priest and one of our best speakers. So, And Lady Athiona? Lady Athiona is the cat's meow. <laughs> I loved her from the get-go, and I was so disappointed when she left our group for a while, but she came back. Now she's our other third degree, and I'm glad she's here. Me too. Do you have any advice for people who are newly seeking the path of Wicca? Buy a book. Read a little bit. Then check the internet for groups. See what they're about. Uh, if they have a, a good website, find out what they teach or do they teach. Um, I would say go and talk to them. If they are not what you want, keep seeking until you find the right fit. Hopefully some of our students are listening to this. Do you have any advice for current Inner Circle students? I would say study hard. <laughs> Learn your lines. <laughs> the witch's room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would say actually stop at least once a month and think, ask yourself if this is your path, if you really want to continue. Do you enjoy it? If you don't, go somewhere else. If you do and you want to keep learning, then by all means, keep coming to classes and keep going. And like I said, if we're not the group for you, keep looking. You're probably going to find a group that will fit. Yep. Thank you very much for sitting down with us and letting us record your voice for posterity. You're very welcome. I think that is all of our questions for this evening. Thank the goddess. <laughs> <laughs>